up everybody how y'all doing how y'all doing see if we get some people on here give it a few minutes Everybody's had a wonderful week so far. Give a few more people time to get on. It's a little warm out here today. A little warm out here. Uh, first and foremost, I gotta give a shout out to my dog, my frat brother. Hatch Maddox, Hatch Maddox for the t-shirt. Y'all see it, it says uh, being black across here in black letters, so it's a little hard to see right here. But it's a nice t-shirt. The symbolism it says a lot. It says a lot. Um, but it says to me that we're resilient people. We are a resilient people, all right? Um, so shout out to Hatch. If you need a t-shirt like this or any other type t-shirt work, um, please get with him. He's on Facebook at Hatch Maddox. Hatch Maddox. Check him out. Um, I missed being out here last Thursday. Um, had a lot that was going on with me personally. As you all know, my wife passed away. So um, last Tuesday was the one-year anniversary of her, of her passing. So needs to say I wasn't in the best of moods most of the week. Um, I got over that hump, though. A big shout-out to my people in Fayetteville, North Carolina, Bernard and Steph. They they asked me to come down and hang out, so I got away. I weren't really celebrating the 4th of July. It was just a, a weekend when people were free and we could, we could get together and hook up. So I went down there on Saturday. Shout-out to everybody that came over to their house. We had a very, very good discussion, and some of the things I'm going to talk about today came out of that discussion there. You know, we had ex-military there. We had educators there, um, even had a judge there, and um, she made an incredible point, which is something I'm going to talk about when I talk about stress. She made a point about how stress messes up the family dynamics for, for black people, um, along with what has been happening so far. What's up, cousin? I see you, Mel. Thank you for checking in. I appreciate it. Make sure you share this and tell a lot of people to start checking in every week. So, um, earlier this week, I posted a video of a man out in, um, I think it was, Oak, they were out in Oklahoma. He was a truck driver that worked for a company that, I guess, uh, did furniture. And he made a delivery into a gated community. So this is where I'm talking about the Karens and the Kevins. He made a delivery into a gated community, dropped off stuff he needed to drop off, he and his partner, who was also a black male, and they're on their way out, but the, the roads were narrow because it's a private community, the roads were kind of narrow, and he was trying to be cautious not to uh, mess up anyone's yard or do any harm, so as he was uh, backing out and straightening out, he did hit a tree limb because a lot of the trees had low-hanging limbs, um, and, the, and the, the person who he delivered to the guy was like, oh, don't worry about that. It's cool. I got it. He ran out, moved a little limb out of the way. And so he went on his way, but he needed to turn around to go out. So he searched for a cul-de-sac within the neighborhood, found one to turn around because he was in an 18-wheeler, and headed, headed out. He noticed that when he hit the limb, there was a car, a white SUV, that was following behind him as he was looking for a place to turn around. Upon his trying to leave and exit out, the same vehicle has now blocked him in so he can't leave out. But when he saw the vehicle originally, it was a white female driving the vehicle. At this point, it's a white male in the vehicle. The white male blocks him in. He's beeping his horn and stuff. You know, I got to get out. I'm trying to leave. We're working. The guy would not let him leave. He told him that. He needed to tell them why he was there, 
who he went to see, what he had to deliver, so on and so forth, because what was he doing in that neighborhood? Well, anybody could see that he's got this big truck and it's a delivery truck. He was obviously delivering something. And so the guy was like, he was like, well, I don't have to tell you anything. I'm not going to tell you anything. You just need to move out of the way. The guy said, well, I'm the president of the HOA. I'm the president, so you have to answer me. Now, come on, y'all. What kind of sense is that making? We, we got these Karens and these Kevins out here, and, and for some reason, they feel like it's their duty to police the world, to police their neighborhood. And I'm not against anyone seeing something suspicious and getting involved. Not personally. Call law enforcement or someone of that sort. But still with that, you got to be cautious because law enforcement may be on some other stuff and, and you're calling for no reason. At least try to see how some things are playing out. So he's the president of the HOA. He feels like they're supposed to give him all this information. He's not going to let him out. He calls the cops. He's telling the cops that the guys are there. They have no business being there. It's a gated community. And so the driver used that to his point. He said, you said it's a gated community. You have to have a code to get in here. So how in the world did I get in here without having a code? I had to have a code. Well, where'd you get the code from? How'd you get the code? Who gave you the code? You know? So I, he's like, man, it's just not making sense. So to make a long story short, it goes on, and he, he's using some profanity eventually because he's getting, getting upset. So then he decides to call his supervisor, the manager at at his, at his uh, place of employment, to let them know what's taking place. They don't understand. Um, they happen to be Caucasian. They're like, well, what, what in the world? Why? So the thing's go on. Oh, this is my man. Came to sit with me. E. Celine, what's up, brother? My man, what's happening? What's good with you? What's good with you? Um, well, well. So things go on, and he decides that uh, they just, they're waiting for the cops. And then another white man gentleman comes out and he starts asking the same questions and they stand in solidarity like you gotta let us know if you just tell us you can leave it was none of their business so eventually the uh, place or the owner of the home where the furniture was delivered happened to see what was going on or heard through the grapevine in the neighborhood what was going on he rode down and then he spoke to the men he let them know that hey they delivered to my house. I gave them the code, you know, let them go. So as that happened, Mel saying, what's up to you, bro? Um, as that happened, the gentleman comes back. The second guy walks on off and leaves. The other guy comes back to his car, and the guy's like, well, can we go now? And he's like, oh, yeah, you can go. He's like, well, are you going to call the police? And he's like, that's who I'm on the phone with now. So he's telling the police not to come, supposedly. And the guy was like, we, we get an apology or anything? The guy just looked at him and went on about his way. It was, that was very nasty, very nasty. So when he pulls off and leaves, the driver doesn't move. He's nervous. He's scared to move. And this is where I'm going into this thing about this stress in black men and how we have to overthink, analyze, and reanalyze, and play all these different scenarios in our mind of what could happen. So he's like, I'm, I'm not going to leave. I can't leave just yet. I'm giving time to get home, get settled. I'm going to wait. And so his partner's like, why are you waiting? He's like, i got to wait. So he calls back to his supervisor, tells him what's happening. And he says, the supervisor's like, well, okay, you can leave now. He's like, no, I'm not going to leave right away. And then the guy who he delivered to calls him and says, yo, you should be good now. I spoke to him. He's like, yeah, they just left. I saw him leave. He said they, they said that they called the cops back. So here goes the big question mark. But I'm not sure if he called the cops back. So the guy sitting there, he's like, I do not want to leave because if he didn't call the cops back, then it looks like I'm trying to flee the scene. And then once he says that and sits there, this big 200, close to 300 some pound man breaks down into tears and starts crying. Brother? start crying. All of that stress and all of the unknowing and all of the knowing how we've been treated for years and years and years, this man was just trying to make an honest living, 
doing his job, delivering the furniture where it was supposed to be delivered. He did a great job. He was well spoken. So when he was talking, it was no slang, any of that. So he had some smarts about him. <clears throat> he obviously loved and knew his job. He was trustworthy. And he came to deliver and leave out. And he had to encounter that. So these Karens and these Kevins out here that think they control the world and the people owe them stuff, that's a problem. That's a big problem. And I'm saying I'm saying to myself, it needs to stop. Because what happens is when they meet, they come with that fire, and then when they're met with more fire, then they holler and scream victim. Now they're the victim. There's a video of a lady in Montclair, New Jersey. Had black neighbors. She's been messing with them since they moved in. She decided she has the right to walk on their property and tell them what they're going to do and how they're going to do. And when they asked the, her to leave, you know, she, I'm not going to leave. And she's calling the cops. But the husband is holding the wife back, his wife back. Not that she was getting violent. He was just saying, don't talk to her, don't do anything. Let's leave. She calls the cops and says, he pushed me. He pushed me 10 feet. He pushed me 10 feet. So they know they use that privilege and that skin color as a weapon, mm -hmm. especially the females. And they scream victim. She came onto his property bothering them, where she had no business being, but now it's turned the situation, oh, you've harmed me, I'm calling cops, when nobody harmed her. Luckily enough, there were other white neighbors out there. It was like, they didn't touch you. They didn't do anything. And I applaud that neighborhood because they rallied together and they did a march right down to her front door. Everybody screaming all kinds of stuff at her. No black faces, it was white faces. So I applaud that. Um, but that's what I just wanted to talk about. Um, you got anything to say about that, about our daily stress, bro? The things that we go through? I got some more points, but. I think a lot of our stress comes from <clears throat> trying to conform to the, the dominant society. Uh, a lot of times we as black people are always thinking, you know, we don't want to make people feel threatened. We don't want to make the situation unsettling. So we're always going into it, always thinking, what can I do to, to lower or limit situations that might be exaggerated if I show my ethnicity in these dominant white spaces? So I think that's where all the stress comes from, man, not knowing how to be in torn between being yourself and trying to make other people comfortable. That's the stress. Yeah. And and, and, and like I, I mentioned in an earlier time when I was out here talking about how we live in two different worlds. Yes, sir. And how we have to operate in both of those worlds and survive. That's like the stress. going into a store, you're automatically seeing that someone is going to steal. Do I go in the store or do I not go in the store? Are they going to ask me, can I be helped or are they not mm -hmm. going to? Are they going to look at me like I don't have the money? Do I do I have the money? Mm -hmm. um, if, right. if you're an employee somewhere, you know, you got the credentials, you're going to college or not or whatever the case may be, but you do a great job. Mm -hmm. It's time for promotions. Okay? What happened? That's a stress so Stress? How do I go? Should I cut my hair? <laughs> You know, said I cut just my to beard. make another point, just last night, just yesterday, I got a call last night from one of my former football players um, who is also a great friend. He calls me Unc, call him nephew. He lives in the Triangle area out in a predominantly white neighborhood. As a matter of fact, there's only him and one other black couple out there. Mm -hmm. He runs every day. You know what I'm talking about. I'll tell you later. Okay. I'll put his name out there because this situation is crazy. Right. He runs every day. So yesterday about 4 o'clock, he's out there running. I got some water for you over there, too. No he's problem. out there running. Police car comes up behind him. He got his ear pods in, air pods in, and he can hear the engine rev. And they run up behind him and almost hit him. Okay. So he gets into the situation. He calls another law enforcement officer that he knows. It happens to be not in the same, same town, same city. But it's in, you know, in the triangle, mm -hmm. asking what he should do. This, this man is black. He's like, you know, and he holds the highest position. He says, you need to call and report it. So he calls the reporter. He's asking to speak to the chief or someone of authority. They tell him no. 
you know, you're not speaking to anybody. He's like, well, I almost got hit, blah, 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 all this other stuff, things going on. They were like, we're coming to your house. We're sent someone to your house. Mm-hmm. Uh, he didn't want that situation coming to his house. Right. So he's like, I'm standing out here. I talk to whoever. Well, a squad car comes, mm-hmm. but the guys never really get out. Then they finally get out, but they're yelling up to him. So he's like, they tell him, there's nothing you can do, nothing. We're done with it. And they leave. So another phone call comes in. Wasn't a phone call made by him. Mm-hmm. That young man almost got hit by the car. They turn around and come back. They start trying to question him. He's like, I thought y'all said y'all were done with it. What are y'all trying to do? I'm trying to finish my run. Right. No, you need to talk to us. He's like, for what? You're making calls to the to the to the uh, police station, excessive calls, false calls. Right. He's like, I didn't call him, but you can check my call log. Mm-hmm. Oh, you can erase that. You can erase that. He's like, how am I going to erase it? I didn't even know y'all were going to be coming for mm-hmm. me to erase it. Right. So it goes back and forth, and they tell him he's resisting. They put him in a squad car. He's going for a run, y'all. Mm-hmm. They put him in a squad car. He wasn't compliant. Right? He wasn't compliant. You got to be so compliant they take to him, authority. They take, him, they take him to the one station, then take him to the big joint in Raleigh. Mm-hmm. And he booked him. Oh, yeah. They booked him. Non-compliance, bro. They booked him. Now, when they went to the first station... They left him in the car cuffed. Mm-hmm. You know how hot it was yesterday? Was it a and he's like, yo, what are y'all doing? You don't, you can't even do that to a dog. Right, 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 what right. What you understand is the hierarchy of our society that black males is you know, it's the lowest thing. Mm. It's the lowest thing on that on that, on that that totem pole. Right? So, <laughs> another point, all the officers that have been arrested for the things that have happened across the country. Right. Combined, have gotten less time than Michael Vick did for fighting a dog. But we'll talk about that later. Something so, else. um, they they book him, and then when he's in there, he's talking to one of the officers before. He's like, you know, did you watch the tape? He's like, I watched the film. They weren't close to you. He's like, man, they almost hit me. They're like, they weren't close hey, to you. Don't mean he said, well, no did more. you look at the speedometer to see how fast they were going? Oh, that was kind of all the <clears> way in the corner. I couldn't really tell. Mm-hmm. Come on, man, it's crazy. So, yeah, videotape don't mean nothing no more. So we deal with all these all these different stressors on a daily basis. All the videos. And then what happens is you got to go home. Still no justice. You got to go home. Now, you go home to your black prince, princess, queen, whatever you want to call her. Still might be stressed. And she might get a bad rap. Because I, I shout out to black women because y'all support us. Y'all, y'all are our existence. If you're going for y'all, y'all the backbone. I don't know where we, be, where we would be. But we come home after all that stress all day. And sometimes, even though y'all are black with us, y'all may not recognize certain things or even know some of the things that we've encountered or we're going through. Mm-hmm. And our communication may be off. So we come in. Now we're yelling at the kids. Because, see, I've been at work all day. And I've been having to humble myself to police or those that are superior Mm-hmm. In position to me, just so well, I don't lose a job well, and keep food on the table and keep food on the table because they want to flex their position mm-hmm. against me or a police officer who wants to, you know, because my whole thing is I'm a man and we can be mano a mano, but in that situation, I got to be super humble and be someone that I may not be and take myself down levels mm. and be chastised degraded, treated less than a man, so when I come home, I'm probably going to try to exercise some manhood. Because see, the thing about that situation is, do what you got to do to get home. To get home. So Mm -hmm. I come home, the kids are too loud, I'm already on 3,000, I'm yelling at them now, and you're asking me why I'm yelling at them, and then I flip off on you, and we go through when you're supposed to be my comfort, my home's supposed to be my comfort, mm-hmm. and, and, and I'm not saying the black woman is wrong for her reaction. I'm just saying sometimes <clears throat> um, we got to be more cautious of how we react and how we act, and they need to be a little more understanding. So now we're at odds with one another. Mm-hmm. This goes on time after time, and then our family dynamic is torn apart. 
because I say I can't take it or you say you can't take it. Now, that takes us all the way back to slavery. People always talk about the dynamics of the black family. I'm going to jump out and say some of it is almost genetic and hereditary. They've been tearing our families apart for centuries. Rape our woman in front of us, and we have to stand there and watch, taking away your manhood. Mm. Beat your husband in front of you, taking, PTSD. Away, taking away the support of the family. Because all men, all men, no matter what, what race they are, what creed or color, want to be protectors and providers. And when we feel like we can't be protecting or be providing, then comes the craziness. And I think that's a that's a, another level of stress too when it comes to to brothers. You know, um, as a man, you know, you got that providing role, but when society makes it difficult for you to kind of play that role, that that adds a little bit of stress to it. Because you understand as a man, you're supposed to be caring for and providing for a family. And when due to unemployment or whatever the case may be, you can't do that, that heightens the level of stress. Because then you might have your lady on you. Um, I was watching, remind me, Insecure with uh, your girl and your boy. What's your man named Lawrence? Yeah. Uh, and your boy and your girl. So Lawrence, your brother trying to make it, but he ain't had no job. And so that put a, 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 some stress in his relationship. Because a sister like, bruh, you ain't got no job. And I can't be with my girls having to deadbeat boyfriend, husband, whatever the case may be. So it's stress. Stress. I know people that deal with stress dealing with people incarcerated. Yeah. Like yeah. he got a charge. I don't know if I can be with him. Yeah. Well, I they, like him. Whether well, the charge is, is, is legit or not. I like him. He make me feel good. But I can't take him around my people. People. Exactly. It's going to be stress. Exactly. So, yeah, that's another level of stress. <laughs> Black people got to have a good show. We, we got to show like we made it, everything good, nothing wrong. So we talk about making it. You make it, and then you move on to these nice neighborhoods. Stress. And then you got the Karens and the Kevins again. Stress. Why are you here? How are you here? What are you doing? And that's what I was saying, Joe. How are you driving that? We trying to what fit into be? the dominant society. Yeah. What, what, must that, what must that be like? You know what I'm saying? Um, you shouldn't even be here. Stress. You know. Uh, even, you know, I know we had a time, like, when I came up, it was about being cool. You had to be like, nothing bothers you. Yeah, 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 yeah. But you can't do that. But that was, that was the way, that was our coping mechanism to try to deal with the stress. Well, we go back to that provider thing. We talk about all the redlining and stuff that's happening historically. You know, you work hard, save your money, do the right thing, chasing the American dream, which everybody's supposed to have a, a piece of that pie. It's you know? a nightmare. And then you can't have it. Oh. No, you can't live there. Mm -mm. No matter what your money dictates. You know, we got a whole lot. Hey, Jay-Z is a, he's a billionaire. But I don't want Jay-Z to get it. And I and he acts like he ain't got it confused and twisted. Because mm -hmm. at the end of the day, yeah, you got a bit. Now, I'm going to say, access to, to money that that helps balance some things out, but your skin tone will bring it all back out very quickly. Mm -hmm. um, so they still view you the same way. I just want, I just want. So then, too, Joe, I say a lot of uh, a lot of stress also come to you know black identity. Like we we have a we have a lack of it, and then a lot of times we try to find that identity that that brings that brings stress. You know, yeah. whether you identify with your job and career, and everything becomes about that. Yeah. Uh, whether you dive into, you know, black men, it was about women. Like, so, I'm going to dive mm -hmm. into the women. Yeah. We got all these women. It might be the sports. Like. Yeah, you, you, you get, get engulfed and consumed. So then that's stress, because then you have to maintain that identity. So now, we, we talk about the stress on, 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 on the opposite side. Okay. Coming from the opposite. I'm going to talk about the stress coming from our side, personally. Black man, they, okay. They, ooh. So now, first of all, I want to go ahead and dispel the myth of this black-on-black -black crime. There is no black-on-black -black crime. Mm. There is crime. Mm. Because if you look at the killings and do your research, you'll find that there's more white-on-white, -white, if that's what you want to say, than black-on-black, -black, okay? What we see is because we're boxed in 
these neighborhoods your projects or low income neighborhoods it's not really a black on black thing it's partially psychological and economical anyone that's put into a situation where they can't eat they, they can't come up out of a situation mm -hmm. of money that breeds violence mm -hmm. and so with that violence being bred you going to attack who lives there. Mm -hmm. If I see you got food over there and I have none, I'm going to take your food. And if I'm white and you white, then it's white on white. If I'm black and you black, then it's black on black. And if you black and white, it it goes it goes like that. So we got to get away from this thing. We got this black on black crime. It's a socioeconomic thing. It's, 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 it's poverty in our neighborhood. And so who else are you around? So if you're going to commit a crime, who are you going to commit the crime with or to? Mm -hmm. The person is closest to you. You know, just like I said, we can't go ride in California. The Crips and all them in Compton can't ride out in the ball in here. They can't, mm -hmm. you know, they can't go in the in the Hollywood and go in the big neighborhoods. Because somebody, who, who, who's that? What you doing here? That's why them white people putting our guns now. Like, oh, you in our neighborhood. You're not going to come over here and tear this up. Yeah. So. A gun on your face. Mm-hmm. Back up. So let's get away from that. But because we've been downtrodden and beat so much, black males, all we have is our symbolism or our thought of what manhood is. Mm -hmm. So I got stress coming from over here, but when I'm in my neighborhoods and stuff on a daily basis, I can't show weakness because I just told you. If you show weakness, then you food because everybody's trying to eat. Mm. Survival out here. So... Like you, the you never, you never get to relax. You're always on point. Mm -hmm. You're always analyzing and reanalyzing. You're always playing the what if or how can or what is it. Joe, or you're going to wild out and just be like, you know, forget it, which is going to bring some other stress because you're going to get a rest for your actions. So that can mean like your that. death if you slip. Oh, yeah. It could be your death. One, one slip, it could be hey, your hey, death. So hey, you got to be hey, sharp. And everybody, and everybody know that. You know, you, you, you out in our type neighborhood. Yeah. One false move, you know, because we live by a whole different code. Mm -hmm. We live by a different code. Mm -hmm. It's a lot of stuff. And and a lot of us, that, that hurts us when we get into another work situation because we move different. Mm -hmm. You know, you cursed at me and said something to me, and, and we at work. I got to be able to, because I know in the street, then you get smacked. Yeah, so I was in a, I was in a meeting one time, man, and I'm in the meeting, and I felt like the dude lied on me. He gave, up, and I called him a lie, and I was like, I don't like you, you a liar. <laughs> they was like, you can't do that up in here, but from where I'm from, that's how you do it. Yeah, like you come straight from the cuff with, it. and they're like, no, nah, in this setting, that is inappropriate. So. I got a write up, but I'm still like a nigga a lot. Can y'all imagine? <laughs> can y'all imagine playing Monopoly? You got one piece, but you playing on two boards. So that's that's what we deal with, you know. And again, I gotta applaud our black women because y'all y'all are something incredible, man. Y'all deal with the stress of being black. You don't have all the stress that we have because there's a whole lot of stuff that we don't talk about. <clears throat> y'all don't know. It's just. You know, and y'all may see y'all see a lot of it, but that's just to us. And 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 but y'all y'all hold the stuff together, man. Y'all hold a lot of stuff together. Yo, know, women deserve. were taught how to deal with their emotions, man. Men, oh yeah, we weren't. We taught, don't man. deal with emotions. You don't have none. Fall down, don't cry. You, you don't have no cry. emotions. You better not cry. You, you don't have not, none. You know, so we don't. We never were taught how to I, 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 manage them, bro. I think in some instances, in me being a father, I failed in a lot of those areas. Cause sometimes I was trying to make my son too, you know. Yeah, I, you know. I, I like man. the fact he is who he is. He he ain't out here trying to be somebody else. Mm -hmm. He ain't trying to fake, you know, and, a cool dude. You know, he ain't trying to fall into the necessary stereotypes. Mm -hmm. Like I gotta be out here and have a lot of girls. I right, gotta be right, out right, here. right, right. You know, he he does his thing or whatever. But and he, to your point, cool Joe, that can, parents can be stressed on kids, oh, man. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, trying to live up to to their examples or and what they wanted to be. I think it was probably 10th grade. Tremaine was like, it's my life. <laughs> it's my life. life yeah. I make my decision. And it's good for him. It's good for him. You have to fall back. I had to, to fall, fall back. back. Fall back. 
Now, I, I will because I was pressing the time that they came through. They, they got a little more luxury with that than us. <laughs> oh, yeah. Having that luxury. Mm-mm, oh, no. Nah. If I'd have said that to my people, I'd have been in the flow. My pops. This is my life. Oh, bow, you in my oh. house? I broke, I broke my toe with my pops. They came home from karate class. I broke that joint. He was like, you know what's that is? It's oh, you still got the work. He cut his grass, bro. Cut they can say, up. no empathy. Hey, he had, hey. None. He ain't want to see. No complaining. Mm-hmm. And you better not be showing no pain. Figure it out. But like Figure I'm saying, but, but coming out. from his coming from his dynamic, out, man, bro. you had to be like that as a boy because he understood what you was about to walk into. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, you can't yeah. be out there showing that yeah. break. Yeah, he's, he's like. He was like, I'm gonna make him a man. He gonna get out here and stand nah, he up. Wasn't, he wasn't above crying. He didn't right. need to cry, especially if it was, you know, a death or whatever. Mm-hmm. He, he was in church and was moved and touched. Right. You know, he'll, he'll, he'll shed a tear. But outside of that, there ain't no crying. And so I, I just developed a philosophy that uh, you don't cry about nothing. Right. If it ain't dead and it didn't fall off. <laughs> yeah, there ain't nobody. If nobody's dead and it didn't fall off, like you good. cut this and it's bleeding terribly, but you but good. it's still it's still intact. We can fix there that. Ain't no need to be crying. Fix that. Yeah, we can fix, they can fix that. You know. Yeah. So, but you know, to your point, that's, that's my own personal talk, hang up that I got to get over. You know, I, I never really been um, one to verbalize mm-hmm. to verbalize my. Uh, Feelings and mm-hmm. emotions, even in my marriage and in dating. Stuff, right. I'm a big show person. Mm-hmm. I believe in action. Yeah. So in our early relationship, that was a problem because she, well, here I love you mm-hmm. and all this and want to be touchy feely. I, I wasn't really that dude. Right. You know. And I think that goes with a level of stress too, man, because a lot of times your worth is based on what you do, which is kind of unfortunate. And then if your activity is not sustained and maintained, sustained consistent. Like people can say you losing value because you're not doing this yeah. or doing that. Yeah. But that's unfortunate, but that's how it is. Like people base your worth on what you do. And that could be stressful. Well, it's very stressful. I, I really like now, like I'm sitting back, I don't really do much. I'm like, dang. I I, was, <laughs> I hit 30 and, and I didn't have <laughs> what I thought I needed to have. I was at 30, I Man. was worth at least 10 million. Man, you know how I many students uh, I deal with? It's like, I need to graduate. I was pressing. Yeah. Pressing, pressing from society's ills, from being a black man, and just from being a man and wanting to be able to do and, and do at a higher level. Right. You know, uh, I think I said up here one time before, I, I'm working. At, over and I'm gonna call them out. I'm working over at Duke in their in their uh, research trial thing, mm-hmm. medical trial joint, and um, completing a master's degree. And there's a position open. I'm interning downstairs, right? Working up in the spot because I had a little job first, and then I decided to do my intern because I wanted to go into mm-hmm. health administration. I figured instead of dropping all the credits I had at Central at the time and going mm-hmm. to Seton Hall which is where I was going to go to okay. and get that that degree. Um, I just stick with this master in public administration and just have a, a focus in health. Right. It was rocking it. It was it was cool. But then this lady, oh, the white lady, you know, a young guy came working at high school, white kid, he dropped out of high school. Gave him the position. Took him up. Gave him the position. He came right. after, he came after yeah. me. He didn't finish high school. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? That's stress. He was a, he was a, a, a golf Mm-hmm. You know, and she even told me that one time, and I said it here before, you know, that she would be feeling more safe in a black, dark parking lot at night with him than me. And I had on regular clothes. I was like, come on, man. Right. This is just ridiculous. So that's, again, black stress. You do everything you were supposed to do. Everything. Dotted every I, crossed every T, and then you still get denied. Stress. Denied. Why? Why? And then sometimes, you know, it might fall back on you. You might start thinking you... You less than. You're less than. You're not good enough. You exactly. Start yourself. Start cycling into yeah. depression. Then you start looking at avenues where you can be dominant, and that might be in the street. You brawler. Mm-hmm. Well, I'm gonna prove that I'm tough and I'm mm-hmm. the man and I can be superior. You know. So it, it's a whole lot of factors to go with this. But a whole lot. I want to thank you for coming and chopping it up with me, bro. Yes, sir. Anytime. Anytime. And uh, everybody who's been listening one. in, thank y'all. Thank you. Thank you. Again, make sure you check out Hatchmatics for those t-shirts. Check them out. 
Make sure you get it hatched. He got that. Hatch used to cut hair hatch. <laughs> yeah. Ah, hatch used to cut my hair back in Central. Hatch What's that, up, Hatch? Hatch got that heat. Ah. Uh, he got that heat. That's all right. Um, these discussions, y'all, hopefully we can continue these and we can expand these. Please share with your friends and family. And I want y'all to be a little more engaging. I need some people saying some stuff so that I can speak to you and answer some questions or you can ask questions. Or if you want to say something, I'll read it and repeat it and, and, and say it to the audience. Um, but let's just keep this thing going. And uh, it's, a, it's, it's definitely a release for me. It helps me out. It's therapy. And, uh, you know, once again, shout out to my wife because she's the, she's the catalyst for this. She's the, the brain the brain child of this. And we never thought about being on social media. We just thought about me getting some guys over on a weekly basis, a bi-weekly basis, and just us chopping it up mm -hmm. and um, discussing the things that we're going through. Brothers life. don't talk, man. Reach out yeah, to your brother. We ain't hollered at him in a minute. Got say you. what's happening, how you, you feeling. got any of these type situations, fellas, y'all on Front Porch Discussions, share them with us. Front Porch Discussions, excuse me, ladies, there are no women in that group. It's just all black men. So, guys, you can feel free to share your stuff in that space, man. We ain't, we ain't got to be super macho when you get into the uh, front porch discussion. And uh, hit Facebook and Instagram. Let me open this up. Right there. Pull it back. Bingo. Yeah, Instagram. And share your own video. Wow, yeah. Hashtag front porch discussion. Tag me in it. Let's keep this thing going, man. Let's, let's talk the movement and get some, get some stress off some brothers and try to uplift and support one another, man. So y'all have a good one. Peace. Talk to y'all later.